Now we want to discuss the different functions of the internet protocols. The physical networks uh, provide two different types of services. One of these uh, networks uh, provide a connection-less service. Here, communication takes place without uh, an establishment of a connection. Uh, communication is done in form of transmitting packets, which are sent through the network. Example for such connectionless services, for example, is a datagram transport with IPv4. Other uh, networks uh, provide and application need connection-oriented services. Here, uh, communication takes place after a connection has been set up between the sender and the receiver. And in the result of the data packets are sent and received in the correct order and uh, uh, other functionalities. So, for example, to give an example, uh, the TCP uh, protocol is such a connection-oriented system. So when we uh, want to design and want to see what uh, internet protocols need to be able to do, then they need to organize as well the connectionless, as well as the connection-oriented services from the underlying network. If we consider the internet protocols IPv4 and the uh, uh, next generation uh, protocol IPv6, then they implement connection-less services. So what we have to solve is that by means of a connection-less service, we have to organize also, uh, uh, also communications, communication services that are connection-oriented. So when the router transform uh, the uh, one network technology in another, it needs to be able to, uh, to transform a connection-oriented uh, service into a connectionless service. The idea we will see uh, later on is to provide such uh, a virtual, uh, so con virtual connection-oriented uh, services and uh, the idea behind is that one needs to understand what is the difference or what, what is, is the characteristic of such a connection-oriented service. And characteristic, for example, is that each package arrives in the same order as is sent for. If there are three packages sent, one, two, three, then they arrive uh, exactly in the same order uh, if it's a connection-oriented system. It's a connection-less service each packet goes its own way, and there is no general uh, guarantee that they come into the right order. So when uh, such internet protocols uh, need to uh, provide functionality that helps to transform uh, connection-oriented uh, services, then uh, they need some, uh, some uh, functionalities. Uh, here is a packet numbering uh, that helps them to simulate this connection-oriented service by means of a connectionless service. Another uh, function that needs to be provided by internet protocols is the addressing. Each of the interconnected networks has its own addressing scheme, its own addressing format, its own addressing scheme. So the internet protocols need an internet protocol need to offer a uniform uh, network-wide uh, addressing scheme uh, and uh, it needs to provide a possibility to translate such addressing scheme that is valid for the all the interconnect uh, all the interconnected networks to the addresses that are used inside of one network. Here there is okay direct services are needed that allow the assignment of the different address types of the uniform internet address to uh, uh, address that it's valid in a certain uh, network. This mapping is done by a separate protocol, it's ARP protocol, and uh, this uh, provides an interface of the internet layer 
uh, to the network access layer to translate such addresses. Here's an example. This is an IP address and the IP address is uh, in a concrete network uh, assigned to a concrete uh, host uh, which is characterized in this network by its MAC address which has this uh, shape and style. So in this way, systems have different types of address. They have their own address that's valid inside the network, the hardware address, and then they have the internet address that's unique all over all the interconnected networks. Now, uh, next functionality that needed by an internet protocol is that uh, it takes care about the correct forwarding of data packets over the different various networks with their different uh, technical operating parameters. An important parameter, uh, uh, communication parameter of a network is the maximum packet size. So the different interconnected networks differ in, their, in this parameter in uh, their maximum packet sizes. Now, the uh, let's assume that in the interconnected networks there is a packet of a certain length and the internet protocol sees that this packet needs to be transported uh, over, another, over another network which has a smaller maximum packet size. So there is a problem to be solved how to transport this packet which is too long for the next uh, network in the right way. So here the important parameter is the MTU, the maximum transfer unit, which, is, which gives the maximum data packet size, which is a load. And if an intermediate system and the internet protocol uh, realize that they have to forward a packet which is too long for the neighbor networks, then this packet needs to be broken down into pieces, it needs to be fragmented uh, so that it can be transported over the neighbor network. Of course, in the moment uh, a data packet is uh, broken down into fragments, some additional information needs to be added so that the receiver is able, the receiver of the different fragments is able to realize, oh, these are only fragments, and is able to put the different fragments uh, to each other to get the, uh, the, the original data packet. Now, after fragmentation, the packet is small enough to be transferred also to the neighbor uh, network. It can happen that this fragment of the next network reaches a router which realizes that the next network the package has to be forwarded uh, for that has a smaller MTU. So then this fragmentation has to be, uh, has to be repeated. And new information needs to be added so that the receiver at the end is able to correctly defragment the packet. You see, only this few examples show that the very complex tasks that need to be solved by, the, uh, by, the, by an internet protocol, by an internet protocol family. And uh, the development of the internet protocol family TCP IP, they began in the 1970s. And uh, while the designers, while the engineers developed the TCP IP, they developed the concept of internet working. There was an uh, older reference model for communication. This was the iso osi uh, reference model. It was older, it was developed theoretically, and uh, uh, so we see that in this iso osi reference model, this internet working concept was not uh, developed, so for this reason, in the iso OC reference uh, uh, protocol stack, the internet protocol layer is missing. We discussed already in the first week about this uh, protocol stack, so you know the TCP IP protocol stack, and here is, an ex here is a mapping 
of the uh, uh, between the TCP/IP protocol stack and this older uh, OSI protocol stack. And you see this internet protocol layer is missing in the uh, TCP IP uh, stack. Instead, the OSI, uh, net, the, in the OSI uh, protocol stack, there is a network layer. Here, in case of the transport layer, there is a one-to-one -one relation between TCP and uh, OSI protocol stack. But here, in the application layer, there are three layers from the OSI model from the OSI protocol stack, the session stack, the presentation stack, the application stack, uh, uh, put into one. So there is a relation, but not so close, and uh, the OSI uh, protocol stack uh, we need only to mention because some of the older communication standards are based on this. Now let's have a closer look to this already mentioned fragmentation. It's very interesting. It's very interesting to see how this is solved uh, in the internet. So let's start here with a large data packet, a large data packet that uh, uh, reads a router, a uh, router which sees, okay, this data packet is too large to be sent through network one. So router one takes this large data packet and uh, fragmented it into uh, fragments of the right size uh, to be transported through the network one. Then the fragments, we already mentioned that router one has also to add some uh, administration information to each of these uh, fragments. Each fragment needs the uh, receiver address, the sender address. So there is, of course, a lot of over, uh, overhead uh, information needed to, uh, uh, to realize this principle. Uh, These different fragments are sent through the network one and reach router two. Then router two puts these fragments together, uh, puts these fragments together, hand it over to router three, and then router three considers the situation of the network two and sees, okay, also here, the packet is too large, but here it's a higher MTU than a network one, so a smaller uh, uh, so fragmentation uh, need to be done in a smaller number of fragments and then uh, add additional information and these packets are sent uh, and router four again uh, uh, puts back uh, these uh, fragments to a larger data packet. Besides of the transparent fragmentation, there is also a non-transparent fragmentation. Same situation, we have a large data packet. Router 1 realized that for network 1, uh, the MTU is smaller, it does not allow to uh, transmit this large data packet, so it uh, organized fragmentation. Fragments are sent through the network, router 2 receives this. Now, router 2 does not defragment the fragments. Router uh, 2 hands over the smaller data packets to router 3. And now router 3 checks, is this packet, the single packet, uh, of the right size to be transported through the network 2? If not, the router 3 organizes that each of these data packets are fragmented, are fragmented so that it's, uh, uh, the size is uh, fitting uh, for transport to a network uh, 2. And this goes on, and in the non-transparent fragmentation, only the receiver is reconstruction, is reconstructing, is defragmenting the fragments to reach the original data packet. So here in this way we see that uh, the router spare uh, work because they do not uh, defragment because there is a probability that the fragment's uh, size is, uh, needs to be small also for other networks. And uh, in this way, we have another type, a second type of, uh, a second type of uh, fragmentation. What are the problems arriving from this concept? Here, we have to guarantee that the receiver is able to correctly reassemble the individual data packets. In the first moment, it seems to be easy because the first idea is that all the data packets are the same size and only need to put together. But please do not forget, each of the fragments, 
it handled as an own data packet. So the next transportation steps do not remember that it's only a fragmentation part and that there are other fragmentations. Each fragmentation is handled in a separate way. And so it's possible that each of the fragmentations can send to the goal on different passes. And in the moment they are sent on different passes, it may happen that they reach, that they are transported via networks with different MTUs. So that the different fragments are fragment a different way uh, on uh, the future uh, path to the goal. So we have different fragmentation his history and uh, this is a problem, different fragmentation size can occur. Another problem one has to think in, uh, if when one implements this fragmentation concept is that during the transport transmission errors can occur. And transmission errors require retransmission of a fragment and then it's quite clear that the retransmission of the fragment goes, uh, is, a, is uh, implemented along another path and this again leads to another fragmentation. So the question, the problem that needs to be solved if one uh, implements such a fragmentation concept is how can is the correct assembly be ensured. One idea is, is the following. There is the establishment of a so-called atomic fragmentation size. And this is a small size of fragments that's allowed. And then some additional information is placed in the header of data packet. So of course the packet number then the number of the first fragment which is contained in the IP data packet. Then a control bit uh, is uh, used to indicate whether this is the last fragment of a data packet, this is then equal one, or whether there are more fragments uh, uh, follow. And then this looks like as follows. Here we have a data packet and this are the different uh, this is an atomic fragment size uh, to make things easy. Let's assume that's one byte. And this is the header. So here, this is a load. The load is data, uh, a data packet. And here we have the packet number, we have the fragment number, and the end bit. Because this is one complete fragment. Now let's uh, consider what happens with this packet when we start fragmentation. First fragmentation is into fragments uh, uh, here with uh, the length, uh, load length 5. We have three uh, header information, the packet number, the fragmentation number and the indicator that's not the last packet. And then packet number, uh, the fragment uh, here is the number gives the number of the first, the number of the first uh, uh, piece of data uh, counted in the number of the atomic size. And then the signal, the, the bit which shows, uh, which is equal to one, and shows that is the final, uh, that's the final uh, uh, fragment. And then let's assume this fragment takes one way and is uh, fragmented, uh, is, is not necessary to fragment it, but this packet is transported to a router and the router sees the uh, necessity to refragment this packet, then it restarts to take this packet and put it into, as, uh, into fragments, number of the packet, number of the first data packet and its uh, number of the first uh, information, the byte 5, and then indicator that's not the final fragment, and here the starting, uh, the starting load information, that's 8, and the information uh, 1, that it's, uh, the final, uh, that it's the final fragment. The internet protocols have to do more. This was uh, a little bit uh, an insight how internet protocols are dealing 
with the situations that different networks have, different uh, MTUs, different maximal uh, transmission units. But the different networks also have different mechanisms uh, implemented uh, to, uh, for error handling. So what the uh, Internet Protocol needs to, do, uh, needs to do is to translate one error handling method used in one network into an adequate one in another one. It's very problematic because individual networks react differently on uh, such transmission errors. For example, some of the networks discard the error numbers data packet. Uh, they uh, design a new uh, request for an error numbers or missing data packets. Or other uh, networks apply an automatic error correction or even an error uh, uh, replacement or others. The internet protocols, they implement a consistent error handling uh, to manage and to deal with this information, to be with this situation, to translate one method into the other. Same is true for uh, flow control. Also the heterogeneous networks, they have different quality of service parameters and they react in a different way on overload situation or congestion situation uh, in the routers. So also here it's a very uh, sophisticated task, very problematic uh, how to map these different uh, error handling methods, this different uh, packet size, this different uh, flow control moments so that the internet protocol can translate one a mechanism used in one network into the other. Uh, how to deal with data packet losses uh, and other things. Uh, so the internet protocols come uh, with a very rudimentary flow control and congestion control mechanisms. We will discuss all this later uh, when we have a closer look to the different uh, network internet protocols. What we mentioned for the size, what we mentioned for error handling methods, for congestion situations is true also for security requirements. So in the different networks, they come with different security methods. Security uh, means uh, mainly encryption. So they come with different encryption methods and rules, how to handle confidential data. So the coordination and the implementation is very labor intensive, uh, intensive and often it cannot complete it possibly. So there is no adequate uh, mapping between the different methods. So what the internet protocols come and guarantee is a rudimentary security requirement. So if a user wants to have more, uh, he needs to uh, install additional system. So, and uh, same what we discussed before is true for accounting. Also the accounting is done in a different way in the different networks. So the criteria which are used for counting are changed. For example, in some networks, the connection time uh, is the basis of uh, accounting and also the amount of data that's transmitted. And uh, here again, the internet protocols uh, need to come uh, with a rudimentary uh, accounting system uh, to a rudimentary accounting system uh, to deal with this situation.